What is cerebral palsy? Cerebral palsy is an injury to the brain. It comes from an injury to the brain at a young age, maybe an injury to the brain during pregnancy or surrounding birth or just after birth. Cerebral palsy is not just one thing. It's a group of disorders. It's a condition in the brain that affects a person's ability to move. Cerebral palsy makes control of muscles and movement more difficult. Cerebral palsy affects people differently depending on where in the brain the injury is and how severe it is. So somebody with severe cerebral palsy might not be able to walk, might not be able to talk, and might require lifelong care. Somebody with mild cerebral palsy might just have a little bit of difficulty walking. Cerebral palsy typically doesn't worsen. If you have mild cerebral palsy, it's not going to turn into severe cerebral palsy. Often I get asked, why does my child have cerebral palsy? Unfortunately, we don't always know the answer to that. There are some risk factors for cerebral palsy. Having a baby prematurely or a very low birth weight can make a person more prone to developing or to having cerebral palsy at birth. Problems with the placenta or blood clotting disorders or infections in utero are also risk factors for cerebral palsy. All people with cerebral palsy have some difficulty with moving, but there's some other associated conditions that some people might have. There might be some cognitive or thinking difficulties. A person with cerebral palsy might have seizures. They might have difficulty with vision, difficulty with speaking or communicating. They might have joint contractures or scoliosis. There are three main types of cerebral palsy, spastic, dyskinetic, and ataxic. Spastic is the most common, and that's where your muscles have spasticity, where they're stiff and they're tight. In spastic cerebral palsy, you may have what's called diplegia, and that's where your legs are more involved than your arms, and that can lead to difficulty walking. You may have hemiplegic cerebral palsy, and that's on one side of the body. Usually that comes from a stroke in utero. You might have quadriplegic cerebral palsy, and that's where all four limbs are involved. Many people with quadriplegic cerebral palsy don't walk, but some are able to walk, usually using an assistive device. Dyskinetic cerebral palsy typically consists of difficulty controlling movements in parts of the body, and the movements in dyskinetic cerebral palsy might be slow and writhing or kind of jerky. Their muscle tone might be variable. It's sometimes really tight and sometimes really loose. Ataxic cerebral palsy consists of difficulty with balance and coordination. A lot of people with cerebral palsy have different types of cerebral palsy. They have several components of of each of these types of cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy can't be cured, but there are a lot of things we can do to manage it, to help improve your symptoms and your movement and to make life better and to make life meaningful. And now I'm gonna show you a few people with different types of cerebral palsy. Uh, cerebral palsy is a neurological condition uh, in the brain and I actually mine is technically called spastic diaplegia and what that means is um, it's paralysis of part of your body or all of your body depending on which one mine is the legs uh, my left and right legs and they the muscles spas so spastic the muscle spasm and diaplegia is two so I my muscle spasm and they mine are it's a tightness so they are 
they're tighter than than a normal person's muscles. They don't activate like a regular person, and I have to stretch them every day. And um, yeah, that's what it is and how it affects me. No, no other. I mean, I've. I'm sure I'm pretty sure I work pretty well everywhere else so <laughs> okay so that's all it is for me is the legs I am a professional musician um, I just finished my master's degree in music and I uh, I work full-time at a studio my name is Michael Gray I was born with cerebral palsy my parents dress me feed me and take care of all my personal needs. People told me that I would never be able to go to school or get a job. However, my parents were told to never set limitations on what I would be able to do. My power wheelchair allows me to go anywhere. My communication board makes it possible to use the internet, control my environment, do homework, and have conversations with people. During high school, I was in the chess club, played flag football, and took hard classes, like physics and pre-calculus. I was a team manager for the boys' basketball team. I was recognized as our hero's assembly, and elected prom king by my classmates. Daisy does love to ride her bike, and she's quite good at it. Daisy is a super strong hiker. Wow! You made it! <laughs> yeah, I did! <laughs> Sports is difficult for me because of my condition with tighter muscles, but I've always loved having a sense of accomplishment with um, running, and I've always been better at distance running, so my dad wanted me to do it, and I said yes, and I've started running, and it has improved I've improved a lot and it's a really fun experience. My team has supported me every step of the way and I've loved to see how much I've improved from 19 minutes at the beginning of the season with our mile and a half course to 15 to 14 and it's just a really fun experience and I've pushed myself past limits that I didn't know I had. Thank <laughs> you.